name is Karen Borzakian and I am a commissioner for the um, Superior Court. I've been a commissioner since March of 2016. Hello, I'm a commissioner Armando Duron. I was elected as a commissioner in 2015. Hello, my name is Ashley Price. I'm a commissioner and I was elected in August 2021. My assignment is regular family law assignment. I sit in apartment 87 in uh, the Stanley Moss Courthouse. I preside over a court uh, in the uh, criminal division of the Superior Court in downtown Los Angeles. I currently sit in a dependency assignment. Prior to becoming a commissioner, I was a deputy public defender and I was there for 16 years. Uh, for almost 30 years, it was strictly family law. I had practiced um, law for about 17 years. Um, I uh, practiced civil law as a research attorney in the civil division of the Superior Court, and I did that for about four years. Thereafter, because I was interested in criminal law, I transferred to the criminal division of the Superior Court, um, and uh, there I uh, spent about four years uh, learning criminal law, um, and at the same time, I, I was an adjunct professor of law um, where I taught law school at night for their evening course, and uh, thereafter, I started working for the district attorney's office uh, in Los Angeles as a prosecutor where I conducted the prosecution of misdemeanor and felony uh, cases, and I did that for about eight years. And thereafter, I joined the bench, and that has been my privilege. I became a deputy public defender because my goal was to try and help people. And after serving in that capacity for 16 years, I came to a point in my career where I felt like I was just putting a Band-Aid on a lot of the problems that I saw facing our clients and our community. And so I figured, um, as a commissioner, I would be in a a greater position, a better position to make changes um, in the systemic and long-term problems that I saw facing our communities and that's why I decided to apply to become a commissioner. I just wanted to make sure that I was fair, that I could be fair, and so I was in the temporary judge program for five years and finally decided, okay, I'm ready. I applied for a commissioner position because at that time in my life, I felt that I was ready. Um, as uh, a practicing lawyer, I had experience in civil law, in criminal law, I had taught uh, as an adjunct professor, and I also had jury experience, jury trial experience, as a uh, prosecutor. So I felt that I had the experience that would qualify me for a position as a commissioner. In addition, at that time, I felt that I had the demeanor uh, that was necessary for the position. One of the things about being a commissioner that was unexpected was actually the camaraderie and friendship that exists um, in the Los Angeles Superior Court among bench officers. Uh, especially recently, our uh, bench has become such a diverse and exciting place to work. All of the bench officers come from such diverse and interesting backgrounds. And I've been surprised by the fact that there's a lot of camaraderie, there's constantly people checking on you, seeing if you need help. I learn things from my colleagues every day, and that makes this a really exciting place to come to work. I was pleasantly surprised uh, with uh, the aspect of community outreach uh, uh, prospects that we have as commissioners and as bench officers. The most pleasant surprise for me was that um, I could uh, make a difference for families and children. In family law, uh, that's what comes before you. Um, the parties who are in distress over their personal lives and children who are very much affected by that distress. Um, and when you get litigants in the courtroom and you get a chance to talk to them and get them to buy in as to why you're making your decision the way you're making it, how you're dividing up the children's time, for example, and you um, can make a real difference for pe in people's lives. And that's the, uh, the satisfaction of that was the most pleasant uh, uh, surprise for me.
One thing that I wish I knew um, before I applied to become a commissioner was to expect some growing pains along the way. And what I mean by that uh, is that when you're selected to become a commissioner, you can be expected to serve the court wherever the court needs you. And so it's a big possibility you may go to an area of the law that you're not familiar with. You're expected to learn that area of the law and be a leader in that field. And so it can be intimidating at first. I think you'll definitely make some mistakes along the way. You'll learn from those mistakes. You'll grow from those mistakes but you'll really see a change in yourself because you've been able to master a new area of the law and um, you've been able to excel at something that maybe you didn't have confidence in in the beginning. And there's plenty of help. Bench officers will get off the bench at a moment's notice to be able to take your phone call and assist you, but it can be intimidating taking the bench knowing that most of the other people in the room know more about that area of the law because you're brand new. Um, so there can be a transition period, and so you should be prepared for the fact that this job is going to make you stretch and grow as a person as you master new areas of the law as you're serving the court. You know, you, you know that judges can't you know, do a lot of things like be involved in politics and so forth, but there are a lot more restrictions. Uh, and when you receive your uh, judge's uh, handbook, uh, and you find out that it's you know, 300 and, or 400 pages, uh, you, and you realize how many restrictions there are uh, in terms of your personal life and the conduct that you, uh, you know, have to always uh, be careful about even when you're off the bench. I wish they told me that I uh, apply sooner. Um, well, I'm a straight shooter. I'm a straight talker. So my personality is to be very direct and very clear uh, and so, um, so that everybody understands what I'm saying and I'm getting from, from uh, the litigants and the attorneys, uh, you know, uh, straight talk. Looking around at all my colleagues, uh, I think everybody has a different personality. So it's not so much the personality type as it is understanding that litigants want to be heard and that you want to make sure you treat everybody fairly uh, with respect and consideration, uh, but then you make your decision. Uh, and once you make your decision, if litigants are heard, they usually thank you. It's very interesting. Sometimes you, you have to make decisions that are, you know, people don't really like, but if you've heard them and they feel like you, you, your decision is fair, they walk away thanking you. I believe the personal, personality type best suited for a commissioner is someone um, who is not afraid of change, somebody who um, can easily move out of their comfort zone, somebody who can learn new disciplines, um, somebody who uh, has dignity, who is open-minded, decisive, and has excellent uh, time uh, uh, management skills. I think the best personality type uh, to be a commissioner is one that's multifaceted. So let's go through those together. Um, first, the person needs to be a really good multitasker. Um, traditionally, commissioners serve in some of the most important roles on the court. They're very busy courts and they have interaction with the public all day long. So you need to be able to handle a number of different matters and you need to be able to do that efficiently but you have to be patient, calm, and kind. Members of the community are seeing you as the face of the Los Angeles Superior Court, so you have to keep that in mind every day when you're calling your calendar. When you come into that courtroom every day, your tone, the way you talk to people, the way you treat people who are coming into the court, that's gonna make a difference not only for the people that are appearing before you, but also for the staff that's inside that courtroom with you all day long. You are essentially the conductor in your courtroom and everyone is gonna follow your lead. And so I think you really have to take a moment to breathe or center yourself, whatever it is that you need to do to get into a really comfortable place to lead by example every day when you take the bench. My day consists mostly of me being on the bench and here hearings. As a result, um, I um, 
have witnesses that take the stand, I take witness testimony, I rule on evidentiary objections, uh, and I make um, evidentiary rulings. I'm a fact finder, I conduct sentencing, um, I uh, also do a lot of chambers work with regards to paperwork that needs uh, my uh, review and signature. I also run the Homeless Court, which is a very rewarding program. Um, also in my courtroom, um, my courtroom is comprised of uh, staff, such as my judicial assistant. I have a deputy sheriff who's a bailiff. I have a court reporter. I also work with justice partners. I have an assigned deputy district attorney. Uh, an assigned deputy public defender and a uh, alternate public defender and a probation officer. And we all work together to ensure that um, everyone is heard and that our due, pro the due process rights are met for each litigant that appears before me. Dependency is a very busy assignment. We have a number of matters on calendar every day and they're all different types of hearings throughout the, the day. So some of them are very serious hearings, like hearings where we would um, potentially terminate parental rights. And there's also things on calendar that are more routine, such as progress report hearings. Um, dependency is a little bit unique in the number of attorneys that can be involved in a proceeding at any given time. Each parent is entitled to their own attorney. In certain situations, each child is also entitled to their own attorney. And obviously, our families are very diverse. So even amongst the same family, there can be multiple parents for one child. So you have to be prepared to um, call a case with a number of different attorneys involved in just one single case. Um, the hearings that we have on calendar sometimes are very serious um, and sometimes they're more routine as I indicated but the best thing I think about dependency is that every single court date is an opportunity to help our families and what I mean by that is some of the proceedings are very somber um, and there's very serious requests being, being made but then there's other things such as a special birthday visit between a parent and a child and so even though that might not seem as significant as terminating parental rights, for example, that decision is incredibly important to that parent and that child. And so um, the best thing about dependency is every single time I call a case, there's some request that I might be able to grant that could help a family in that particular case. You know, the way I start my day is to I get, I get here before the you know, courthouse or the courtroom opens uh, at 8.30 and I usually uh, do some prep, uh, preparation of uh, cases, not that day, because I prepare usually a week in advance uh, for my cases. Uh, but I do start with my prep. At some point, my JA comes in. He tells me who's here, who needs an interpreter, who's on the phone, whether this, this is their first appearance. Uh, before me and whether I have to uh, get a stipulation to commission it from them if it's uh, a normal stipulation if they're on the phone uh, and then I come out I put my robe on uh, take a second or two to just kind of take a deep breath and then I come out sit down say good morning and I call my first case depending on what I think uh, you know we can get through uh, quickly uh, continuance, uh, things like that, uh, and then take them one at a time uh, until we get to the cases that take the longest time. And then at some point we take our uh, morning recess and by that time there might be an ex parte or a restraining order that I have to review. So I really don't actually get a break most uh, uh, when we take the morning break. Uh, and then go through the rest of the calendar, it's the morning calendar, and then it's lunchtime, and usually there might be another ex party or two, uh, more prep. Uh, sometimes there's a class we have to take in, during our lunch hour, um, and then the afternoon sessions, same thing, Jay comes in, tells me who's here. Other than that, uh, you know, we have some regulars, bailiff, because in family law we have a bailiff. The interpreters might be regulars, uh, you know, the, we have a pool that we use uh, and we see them often. Other than the people who insist on coming back because they haven't gotten it right, um, we see new people all the time. Oh, the only others that might be of some regularity are minors counsel. 
Uh, we do appoint a certain number of uh, in certain number of cases to represent the minors, uh, and so there might be some regularity there, but it's not um, all that frequent. You know, the, the, the highlight is always when somebody's coming back for a review hearing and they got it. You know, they, they're now they're getting along where they weren't before. Uh, they have a talking parent transcripts that they exchanged uh, conversations and now I can see a, a, a whole change in attitude from both parents and they're telling me that the visitation plan is working perfectly, the kids are happier, they're getting along, and, uh, and then, you know, uh, and then I know that, uh, you know, I've done my job. Being a commissioner is such a tremendous responsibility. Every day, I'm making decisions that can change somebody's life for the better or for the worse. I'm humbled every day because of the magnitude of the decisions that I, that I have to make. The people that are appearing before us in our courtrooms are looking up to us, literally and figuratively. Having the ability to make a difference in our community every single day makes this the best job in the world. It was the best decision I could have made in terms of my career. Um, I think I make a difference uh, here. Um, and it's been an opportunity for me to grow as an individual and in my legal career. And it's been a challenge as well, uh, because uh, you know, there are challenges to this, to this job and you have to make adjustments. Uh, and, um, but if you love the job as I do, you make those changes, you meet those challenges, you overcome those challenges. And uh, at some point I'll retire, I hope, uh, you know, having made a contribution to the court. I love being a commissioner. I feel that it is the best job in the world. Um, it is extremely fulfilling um, and it is a wonderful um, training ground for those who wish to move on to become a judge and for those who wish to stay in the role, it, it provides an amazing and fulfilling career. It's a win-win.